What's up, guys? We are live on May 25th. It is Thursday. Sorry for the delay in getting started here. Um, so in today's video, I want to go over the ins and outs of cold approach. Okay. <clears throat> How to get a girl's number, all that stuff. And I'm just going to jump right in here. So the first thing that, that we got to talk about is the fear of approaching, okay, approaching anxiety. When I first started out in the game, I would have my openers, my routines, my negs, and, you know, like Mystery's 13-step process, and I'll be like sitting there in the cab or, um, you know, on the subway or whatever in Philadelphia, like trembling, right? Like literally would be wanting to be doing anything else. So let me talk about where approach anxiety comes from and how people can deal with it. Let me let my fucking dogs out and fucking bitch in here. All right. So where this comes from, mystery's explanation from like an evolutionary biology perspective is that when we we're in tribal times, uh, let's say we were in a tribe of like 20 people. Let's say there's like 10 females for the sake of argument. Some are too old, some are too young. So maybe there's like three options. Maybe there's four options. And let's say that, um, you know, not all of them are attractive either. So maybe you only have a couple options, right? If you were to get rejected, the other girls in the tribe would find out and you may never reproduce. If you hit on a girl that was taken, then the guy could potentially kill you, right? There's no law or anything like that. Um, that didn't come until much later. So uh, this is brothers over here. <laughs> Wondering why there's a, a shirtless guy walking around. Um, <clears throat> okay, so that is where it comes from. And it's just activating the fight or flight response. Okay, like, so it's antiquated circuitry in our biology, it doesn't apply in the modern day. Like if you talk to a girl on the street, you're not going to see that girl again, most likely, but it doesn't, um, it doesn't change the fact that you still feel that fear and it's automatic. And I still even feel it at this level, right? Like mystery admits to it too. I've been on a, a good rampage, uh, the past couple of days, I'm up to 1,654 girls and <clears throat> it's been a lot of like, new between like 18 and 21 years old and they never ever think i'm too old right all these guys that are i'm gonna be 40 in october <clears throat> there was a new 18 year old yesterday and a new 19 year old and like the guys their age don't know how to fuck them they come too quick especially if the girl's super hot and the, the girl's pussies are tighter and all that shit usually when they're younger <clears throat> so <laughs> you're doing great stuff i started formal game in 2009 so I was, um, I'm going to be 40 this year. I'm 39 now. Let's do some quick math. Uh, I was about 25. I, I was about 25 and a half. But I've been going out since I started drinking in my third year of college when I was about 20. And then I quit drinking when I was like 35. But I was going out to lots of bars and clubs and frat parties and I was like meeting girls and, and figuring out the game on my own. It was slow in the beginning though, right? Like I didn't lose my virginity till the end of my first year of college. I didn't kiss a girl till the beginning of my first year of college. And then going in my third year of college, I'd only been with three girls and none of them were very attractive. And then, you know, I started to, to figure some things out on my own, but um, <laughs> I was just talking to some advanced friends about this. A lot of the best guys are very intelligent, like nerdy background guys, right? Like mystery is extremely intelligent. Um, I'm very smart. Like Jess is, uh, what's his name? Uh, Josh is very smart. Like he always plays competitive chess and stuff like that. Comes from an engineering background. It is kind of like revenge of the nerds in a sense because I applied my intellect and analytical reasoning skills to the dating game to turn it into a systematic algorithmic process <clears throat> that's repeatable. And that's why it works so well, right? 
so and i was also talking to other advanced guys like a lot of the best guys also went through some sh shit, right like went through some serious traumas as a child and that helped i think light the fuse or like give the ignition switch um to be motivated enough to take it to the levels that we took it to right like mystery again you know from the book the game he went through a lot of shit. he had like different emotional problems and this and that Jeffy, RST Jeffy wrote in his book Nine Ball that his dad put like a shotgun in his mom's vagina, which is obviously going to cause a lot of trauma. Um, Ross Jeffries went through, he shares publicly that he went through like physical, um, sexual and verbal abuse. And he had like body dysmorphia problems because he was extremely skinny and underweight and was bullied for that. And Ross didn't lose virginity until he was like 29. Um, and Ross said, he spoke at one of our events and he said that he shared with the crowd, and I'll get back into this explanation in a second. He shared with the crowd that he told himself that if he ever climbed out of that pit of like, you know, depression and, and sexlessness and all this stuff that he would reach down in and help out whoever he could. And he said he gets more satisfaction from helping other guys get laid and learn the game than he does, you know, from getting laid himself. I, I hold both in high regard. I like banging new hot chicks a lot as well. <clears throat> so but that's cool, right? Like guys that had to go through what a lot of you guys went through. Not everybody has abusive upbringings. Not everybody has, you know, extreme anxiety problems and, and shit like that <clears throat> or, or wasn't a big nerd or anything. But for what it's worth, a lot of the best guys that I've met, um, it's usually a combination of being very hyper intelligent and also, um, usually having gone through some some level of trauma as a, as a child, I think, because that just gives them that extra spark. A lot of the best UFC fighters got like bullied a shit ton, right? I was I was referenced like George St. Pierre. He was like bullied a shitload as a child. And so he became like, you know, arguably one of the best fighters in the world. So, <clears throat> okay, let's keep going here. So <clears throat> when you feel that fight or flight response, okay, there's a, a circuit in our brain called the amygdala. It's related to fear. And when, when you see that girl in public, it triggers a series of unconscious automatic responses, adrenaline, right? You feel your heart start pumping. Your brain starts coming up with all the worst case scenarios and negative outcomes. It's natural to just think, what if she has a boyfriend? What if she doesn't like me? What if she rejects me? What if people over here and they judge me? What if her friends don't like me? blah, blah, blah. And people focus on whatever their hangups are about themselves. Oh, well, she probably won't like me because I'm too short. She probably won't like me because I'm an Indian. She probably won't like me because I don't look like a Chad, right? And so on and so forth. And so that usually cripples the guy from taking action, meaning it prevents him from approaching. So he makes up a bunch of excuses. Oh, she's probably busy. Oh, she's, you know, like in day game. Oh, she's not walking towards me. And, you know, oh, she's not hot enough. I've heard everything right from the students and I've told myself everything in the past as well. So what you need to do is condition yourself to ignore that and follow the old school game rule called the three second rule. Um, that's awesome. If you could, if you could like throw uh, Chris, if you could throw out some like quantitative stats about like how many girls you were closing per month and per year before you found my shit and now how many you're closing per month and per year after um in which primary lead sources i'd be curious to know um let's take a picture of that so uh yeah follow the old school three second rule so you have no longer than three seconds to approach after you see the girl don't listen to the red pill people about choosing signals which is a stupid concept about how you have to wait for the girl to stare at you before you talk to her. Don't do that. You see the attractive girl, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, boom, you're going in. Number one, that forces you to take action. Number two, it's going to prevent you from focusing on a list of negative outcomes and worst case scenarios. And it's also going to bust you past through those physiological feelings of the fight or flight response being activated. So that, that in a nutshell is how you deal with approach anxiety. You just have to make a hard rule and hold yourself to it with discipline that you're going to approach a girl within three seconds when you see her, when she's attractive. What is your threshold for approaching? 
would you bang the girl or not? It's a binary decision. Yes, you would bang her. No, you would not. If it's yes, you go in. If it's no, you don't. Okay, it's that simple. And then you want to calibrate after the fact, which means you don't try to plan in advance how she's going to react and, and all this stuff. You go in assuming it's going to go well, assuming that she likes you. Remember, the point of a cold approach is just to determine her logistical situation, meaning like is she available to be taken home that right then and there, or should you take a phone number and plan a date for later? Okay, those are the two main paths. You're either going to try to take her home right then, or you're going to meet her at another time when the logistics are more favorable. Like let's say you approach a girl during day game. Hey, what are you up to right now? Oh, I'm on my way to class. I'm on my way to go grocery shopping, blah, blah, blah. Chit chat a little bit, get a phone number, and then, hey, let's meet when you're done with groceries tonight. Let's meet later on when you're done with class. And then you meet up and she has time, right? So then logistics are in your favor. So the name of the game is to move every girl you approach into either a poll, which is taking them home right then, or getting their phone number and, and, and um, meeting them later for a date. Okay. Now, um, besides that, uh, what was the calibrating thing is, or actually, let me go back to the, the purpose of a cold approach is not to win points with the girl. It's not to avoid losing points. It's not to keep the interaction going like, okay, it's been three minutes. Let's try to make it four minutes. It's not to be the clever guy or the impressive guy or the witty guy or the funny guy or any of that shit. Your mindset is, I got the girl for sure before you approach. Of course, she's going to be attracted to me. And it's just your job to move it forward and deal with any objections or noncompliance that comes up in turn. So, um, yeah. <laughs> Calibrate after the fact. You just go straight in with a three-second rule. If she has a negative reaction or she's not interested, then you deal with it afterwards rather than anticipating that happening before because lots of times it won't happen. Um, and, and as a brief side note, right, for those of you that are like, oh, I'm good with Tinder, I'm good with online, um, you know, not necessarily like good skill-wise, but like, you know, I'll stick with my online game. That's a huge mistake, okay? Online game heroes and, and people that are like, almost exclusively or heavily predominantly online are going to have huge holes and gaps in their game. I promise you. Okay. I was forced to learn cold approach, which I'm very grateful for because when I got into the game, Tinder wasn't out yet. And, and these other online apps weren't popular yet. So I had to do it the old fashioned way. I read the book, the game, I read the book mystery method. I started cold approaching and trust me, it wasn't easy because I had debilitating social anxiety, uh, general anxiety. I had panic disorder, obsessive compulsive disorder with looping thoughts and all that kind of shit. I had trouble speaking to anyone. I would turn red and, and I was mild mannered. I was soft spoken, etc. So it really took me out of my comfort zone to walk up to a stranger and put, put myself out there. But it really is exhilarating, right? Especially in the, in the beginning, because you're like, especially when the girl's being receptive and they're not all going to be receptive, especially in the beginning. But that's a really good feeling when you have like a complete attractive stranger, complete stranger. It's attractive, um, you know, showing interest in you and, and wanting to, you know, go home with you or wanting to meet you for a date. Um, okay. So the reason why you have to learn cold approach, even if you're getting decent results from online is that it's going to richly develop your calibration meaning how you react to situations. It's going to allow you to deal with negative reactions, which aren't going to happen as much online. It's going to allow you to, you know, navigate a whole series of, of complex social situations. And it makes the rest of the game a lot easier. You're, once you get good at cold approach, your dates will be very easy. Your closing stuff will be very easy. When you hang out with girls, you'll just carry yourself in a different way because you have the skills and the, the kind of superpower to be able to walk up to a stranger anytime, anywhere for the rest of your life. And you know how to direct it forward and, and make something happen and direct it towards a romantic or sexual relationship. Um, let's see. So that's in a nutshell, how you get over approach anxiety. Okay. To recap, you ignore that fear. It's like a uh, antiquated biological, automatic response. Okay. And 
you follow the three second rule. So you see the girl, one, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, boom, you're in. Don't make excuses. A lot of guys will make excuses. Imagine like a gun to your head, okay? Metaphorically, you've got to fucking do it. You've got to man up and do it, especially like guys that go out alone. Oh, uh, you know, I, I, I went out, but I didn't approach anybody. I was scared. If you're out by yourself and you don't have a wingman pushing you in, right, encouraging you to go approach, it's you against yourself. You have to hold yourself to the you know discipline of going in and i know it's uncomfortable and i know it sucks and i know you wish you didn't have to do it but you know it's you're not going to die and it's going to be fine and there's going to be plenty of girls that are going to really be interested in talking to you and it really builds your character like you will you will evolve a great deal by doing cold approach um <clears throat> i think it's like the you know the purest form of the game even though there's dumb fucks like michael sartain that says it's two percent of the game i can't believe they fucking let sartain and rollo back on value team and after all the disrespect by the way i saw that pop up on youtube last night that they're after rollo ran his mouth and like fucking talk shit all over the value team and brand he's like fucking um you know sit uh, sitting down next to adam sosnick again um but what was i going to say um okay so you ignore the you ignore the shit i like mystery's analogy that it's like a pebble in your shoe right like you feel the pebble you acknowledge it but you do it anyways okay you go do the approach anyways it's not that you're going to stop walking just because there's a pebble in your shoe okay now uh from there what's the next piece okay how do you select which venues to go to the key the thing that you want to pay attention to is the size of the venue. So you want to go to the biggest venues. That's going to be ref what's referred to as the most target rich, aka the most girls to talk to. After you talk to every attractive girl in a venue, that's when you can switch venues. Um, and you also want to take into account factors of like gameable areas. So dance floors detract from gameable areas. Um, and also, you know, if there's like too, if it's too crowded, if people are like bumping into each other and shit like that, um, that's bad for game. Um, so you want to, you want to look at like, like a, a ideal game environment is like an outdoor open air venue where everywhere you go is people can, can fucking hear you. Right. Um, if you're constantly getting interrupted by foot traffic or if it's too loud and she can't hear you or she's too distracted, et cetera, that all detracts from, from games. So like, for instance, like some venues in Miami are almost like exclusively dance floor or even some venues in Vegas, right? If it's mostly dance floor that really detracts from the, the, the quality of, of going there for cold approach. And also if there's crowded areas, tables detract as well. Any clubs that are like mostly just table clubs, just avoid those for cold approach. You just want to go where, where the most people are going. Now, on the weekend, that should be a no-brainer. You just go to the best clubs that are the biggest. During the week, there's different nights that you have to find out in your city, like happy hours, girls' nights, etc. Usually, there's like one or two spots where everyone's going on like a Wednesday or a Thursday or, or a Tuesday. And you need to know what those are so that um you can properly you know hit the right venues on the right nights out so okay what else did i want to cover um i'm going to go over how to get a number but i want to let you guys know okay we still have a couple spots for the miami program i'm running july 5th through 9th you can apply with the link in the description um that will be a Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. And it will be me coaching with two elite level coaches on my team. We rented like a giant mansion, like fucking super baller mansion. We're going to film all kinds of shit there as well. And we're going to film the whole event. Um, but that's July 5th through 9th. And you can you can make an application. Uh, Liz's brother is walking around. He walks our dogs and shit. So... And we have our maid back there as well. Um, okay. So 
what the fuck was I saying? Um, oh yeah. So you can apply for that Miami program in the description, or you can go to platinum dating system.com, uh, or book a free 30 minute call in the description to uh, be trained on the eight week program virtually across eight weeks. Um, okay. Uh, I, I lived in Beijing briefly. You can find ones that don't, I mean, it's okay if they have tables, you just don't want to go to places that are like super table heavy, right? Like if, if it's like, like Tao in New York city, for instance, um, or lava or whatever, or, you know, like in Tao and lava in Vegas too, any club that's like almost all tables and there's like very little areas to game. You just have to look at like how many girls can I speak to in like gameable areas? If it's mostly tables, there's not many gameable areas. Um, okay. So how do you get the number? This is how you do it. Once you realize the logistics are poor, meaning let's say the girl is like, hey, I'm the DD. Um, I'm pretty excited, by the way. There's this fucking really hot chick with fake tits. I'm going to see in a couple hours. And then another new one, the fucking type body that's really good. I'm been on a good rampage lately. Um, okay. So here's how you do it, right? Like, let's say you're in an interaction, blah, blah, blah. Hey, we should hang out after this. Let's say you're at a bar. We should hang out after this. What are your plans after this? Oh, well, I'm the DD for all my friends and my sister's visiting from out of town. There's no way I can hang out tonight. Okay, dead end on the pole. Logistics are poor. What do I do immediately? It's like an if then tree. Okay. I reach for my phone. Oh, cool. Do you like margaritas? Whatever it is. That's just an example, right? I don't say that these days. I don't drink anymore, but you would just say whatever you're going to do on your date. Do you like coffee? Do you like wine? Do you like margaritas? Yes. Cool. We should meet for margaritas uh, during the week here. Put your number in my phone. Okay. And then you hand them the dial pad and you say, like, if you're in the U S this is an example for the U S are you this area code or this area code? And you say the top two area codes, right? So in San Diego, I'd say, are you 619 or 858? Oh, 619. Cool. Here, put in the rest. Okay. You type 619, they put in the rest. Is that, is that your number? I have them verify their number just so that they didn't make any fucking typos. It's a little thing, but it's important. And then um, you work out the plan for when you're going to see them. Let's say it's a Saturday night. Are you free tomorrow? Oh, I think so. Cool. Let's meet tomorrow afternoon. Oh no, a night's better. Okay. Let's plan for six o'clock tomorrow for margaritas. Okay. Sounds good. Then, Hey, it's John from whatever. See you tomorrow for margaritas. Wink face. Okay. Done. The date has been set up. Now you move on to the next girl. You don't want to sit there and sink time into that one that has bad logistics. that can't go home with you. So that's how you number close. Okay. It's, it's much for for years in the beginning i would just say hey let me grab your number we can hang out sometime okay now i got a number now over text in that model without setting up plans in the interaction now over text you have to hope she responds to your opener you have to hope she responds to your back and forth vibing banter you have to hope she responds to the meetup question you have to hope she responds to any kind of logistical difficulties to meeting up you have to hope she responds to you know any objection handling to meet up etc and she can stall you at any one of those points right which is going to fuck up the whole plan so you have a whole uphill battle when you're trying to set plans from scratch over text versus doing it in person okay and once i made that change where i started setting plans in person meetup rates go way up and the amount of dates you get set up will go way up as well so every single girl cool do you like margaritas? Cool. Do you like coffee? Cool. Do you like this? Let's meet for coffee. Let's meet for margaritas. Sometimes they won't be able to make an exact plan. Oh, I don't know my schedule yet. Then you just take the number, but you set plans whenever possible because it saves all that work over text. She can't ignore you in person like she can over text. I hope that makes sense. It's an important point. You want to frame the actual date, day, time, and activity while you're in person in the interaction. Okay. In day game, you're going to try to meet them later that day. So let's say you approach a girl during day game. Hey, what's up? What are you up to right now? Um, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
I got to go to work. Okay, cool. What time are you off work? Right? And then you plan to see them right when they're off work. A lot of the day game closes that I have is I got their phone number during the daytime and then I met up with them as soon as they're done doing whatever they're doing for the day. Once they're done with work, once they're done with class, once they're done with grocery shopping, whatever, you try to meet them right after and close it then. Okay, you want to strike while the iron's hot. Um, okay. Uh, Lebanon. I did a fucking school project on Lebanon. Considering getting the eight-week program, 50-50 Christian Muslim, um, yeah, it's fine. Uh, it works in prude countries. It works in fucking Muslim countries. It doesn't matter. There's adjustments to make accordingly, but it'll, it'll still work fine. Okay. Um, sign up for a call, and, and you can discuss those details on the on the call. Um, let's see. Um, okay. Real quick. Um, let's see. Okay. So, um, hopefully that's clear now on, on how you fucking get numbers. And you should shoot for, I know it's going to sound high, but you should shoot for 10 to 20 numbers on one night out. That's right. 10 to 20 new phone numbers on one night out. Oh, 10 too much. I can't do that. I normally don't even get one phone number. That's fine. This is what you want to do, okay? Always be in set, which means always be in interactions. As soon as one ends, successfully or, or otherwise, you move on to the next girl almost immediately. A lot of guys, they walk into the club, they stand up against the wall, and they're just standing there, staring at all the hot girls telling them for hey you see that girl yeah she's hot oh look at that girl yeah she's hot too damn look at that girl's tits well and i talk like that too right but you want to be taking action like boom 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 there's something called opportunity cost it's a principle in economics it's the time that you are devoting towards one thing could be spent on something else that has better utility so there's this cost of standing around the RSD used to call it being a chode crystal, like basically like all these fucking newbie PU, PUAs or whatever, like forming a crystal in the club together. <laughs> so you don't want to do that. A lot of guys do that, and they and they give in to what I discussed in the beginning. They give in to the approach anxiety. So they see the girl, oh, I want to talk to her, but I'm scared. Oh, I want to talk to that one, but I'm scared. Uh, I'll do the next one. Uh, she's not pretty enough. Uh, that girl you know, probably won't like me. Uh, that girl probably has a boyfriend. That's what most people are doing. Okay. I know this probably sounds familiar. I'm, I'm just being straight up. Like I've taught thousands of guys now over 10 years. I'll literally be on a boot camp with six guys. And I'm like, hey, you hit the girl in the in the red. Oh, uh, which girl in the red? The only girl in the red. Uh which one? The only girl walking towards us. Uh can someone out? No, you do it. Uh she probably has a boyfriend. No, she doesn't. Like go in until you won't know that until you talk to her. Right. And, and that, or I've had programs where like the guy is like, she's not attractive enough. She's not attractive enough. She's not. I'm like, dude, like this one dude paid me a shitload. We're, we're doing one on one. I'm like, I'm only sending you in on eight pluses. And like, we can change it to nine plus. And he, I would like, even when I would suggest a nine, oh, she's not attractive enough. And it, what the root problem was is it that my, sta that my standards are way different than him? No, I was picking hot girls. It's because he was making excuses. It's easier to just do nothing than to go in and put yourself out there. That's why guys would rather sit around and swipe Tinder. Okay. Cause on Tinder, they're not going to have to face like, you know, and again, rejection, but it's not, you know, you don't need to like attach your ego so fragilely to, to the cold approach process, right? You should look at it as a separate thing. Like here's my value. Here's my worth. It's a hundred out of a hundred. It's not moving. It's literally not dependent whatsoever on any girl's opinion of me or any girl's reactions when I talk to them. So I could go get rejected the entire night. I'm still 100 out of 100. I'm still the man. It still doesn't fucking matter, <clears throat> right? You might be saying, well, 
I don't get any girls and I don't have much going on. So how can I be the man? How can I be 100 of 100? I've said on many streams, you list out your skills, accomplishments, hobbies, interests, and cool experiences. And then you come in with a positive mindset because if you don't believe in your in yourself and your own value, the girl sure as fuck is not going to believe in it or it's at least going to very severely handicap you. So it all starts with your own beliefs about yourself and what you're capable of and what your value is. Then as you get demonstrative success in the form of more positive reactions, more phone numbers, more dates, more hookups, more girls in rotation, your quality improving, etc., commanding more respect from your friends, you know, that's all going to directly feed back on your confidence and it's going to propel you further. Right? Once you bang a 7, no one can take that away from you. Once you bang an 8, nobody can take that away from you. Once you bang a 9, nobody can take that away from you and it's very empowering from a psychological and mental confidence standpoint that you did that and at some point in time some girl somewhere that was a nine or an eight or whatever you know level you're at thought you were good enough to bang right so does it matter that some new girl that you just met doesn't like you of course not just as you know i always use this analogy as well just as if a top salesman that was doing door-to-door -door sales knocking on doors he can never, ever, ever stop the scenario of someone being in a bad mood and open the door and telling him to fuck off. He can never stop the scenario of a person just being completely disinterested. Maybe they don't have the money for the fucking home security system, whatever he's selling. Maybe they are maybe they already have one, right? Maybe they just have been bothered too much that day or they don't like people soliciting them, you know, for, for sales and stuff like that. Who fucking cares? Okay. Hey, I, blah, 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 fuck off. No problem. On to the next one. Does that mean that this top salesman in the world suddenly sucks shit? Does it mean that he's worthless? No. Does it mean that he sucks as a salesman? No. Okay. So that's the difference. It's what what happens is that here's let me just give you one more uh, brief picture. The typical guy, he goes out, as I said, he posts up with his drink and he's standing there. And he's observing the rumor. He's doing his like predatory rounds of the club over and over and over. And he's talking about how hot some of these girls are to his friends. And they're staring and they're like, you know, doing that whole thing. And when it's time to actually make a move, they don't want to. Why? Because they're scared. Why? Because they are letting all those negative things that pile up overtake them and, and, and overpower them. So instead of paying attention to this negative set of things and handicapping yourself to the point where you do nothing or you go in with a really shitty attitude or really expecting a rejection, which oftentimes becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy, instead, you have a positive mindset. You think you're 100 out of 100. Your value stays fixed at that level. And when you have the proper strategy, that's going to give you a lot of extra confidence as well because you know what to say and you know what to do and you have a benchmark for which to judge what you did versus what you should do. Most guys are going out and they have no fucking clue if this works or that works or that works. So they're just stumbling around the dark, making a whole bunch of poor moves with a shitty mindset and it's a recipe for failure. And then that deflates their confidence. Instead of building them up, getting positive reactions, it deflates their confidence, right? And then poisonous institutions like Real Social Dynamics was telling everyone, well, just go do that more and more and more. After you go do that a whole lot of nights, where you're out feeling shitty about yourself, expecting rejection and getting rejection, it's going to keep reinforcing that you suck in your mind and it's going to make you feel like shit and you're not going to see any light at the end of the tunnel because there's no return in a positive sense for this effort that you're putting in, even though that effort is kind of misdirected and misguided, meaning you have a bad mindset you have no strategy or very poor strategy thing a miracle to happen right it's not that cold approach is hard it's that you need the proper mindset and the proper strategy and you need to have proper expectations meaning not every girl will like you get that out of your head right now um and you need to start treating the rejections and, and the girls that aren't interested the same way that a salesman would look at someone that wasn't interested when he knocked on their door they don't want your product for whatever reason you don't give a shit what the reason is there's plenty of other people that do 
And there's plenty of girls that are going to be very receptive when you talk to them. Go find those girls. Don't stand there and try to convince a girl that doesn't like you or that told you to leave that she should like you or that you're cool or that she should meet you anyways, even though she has a boyfriend. That's another fucking time sink. Hey, sorry, I have a boyfriend. Oh, well, is it a boyfriend boyfriend or how serious are you guys? Uh, is he handsomer than than me? Do you, do you think his cock is bigger? It's like, dude, go talk to that girl over there. She's hotter and she's going to be more receptive. Okay. Like probably, right? Like <clears throat> Josh would always tell guys on boot camps that if you get a rejection, there's a hotter, cooler girl right around the corner that's going to suck your dick that night. And the guys would be like, oh, because it's like crude, right? <clears throat> but it's true. So you want to be focusing your attention on the girls that are receptive or at least like open on some level to talking to you. Okay. And that's why I really like night game as opposed to day game. Day game's fine too. I'll, I'll go into the pros and cons of it, but the the return is a lot lower in day game, meaning there's a lot of downtime in between interactions where you're just walking around on the street or in the mall or whatever. Whereas in night game, hey, what's up? I want to meet you. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. Hey, what's up? I want to meet you. Boom. I'm already in the next interaction like a second later. Okay. I didn't have to go walk for a half hour outside until I saw another attractive girl. There's one right next to me. <clears throat> Plus, you're like pretty much anonymous when you're working the room in cold approach. Um, and hopefully, I'm not jumping around too much, but let me go to uh, the explanation of how you get 10 to 20 numbers a night. Let's say for the sake of argument that you get into the venue at 10.30 p.m. And also let's say for this example that you're in the U.S. That's where a lot of my viewers are from. We look at the viewer stats. It's like U.S. is number one. Then it's like U.K., Canada, Australia. And then, you know, some first world European countries. <clears throat> um, but we, we have viewers from all over. So let's say you get in at 10.30. The bar club closes at 2.00. And you should work the street afterwards up until about 2.30, let's say, for the sake of the example. Why should you keep talking to people even after the bar club closes? Because it's very easy to pull right after the girls have left the venue. Let's say it's a group of four and you had spoke to them in the venue. There's three girls that could cock block you. Plus, you have to convince her to leave the venue with you. If you speak to them afterwards, that let's say that like some of her friends went in an Uber and she's already out of the venue. So you don't need to convince her to leave the venue. And maybe she's by herself or maybe with just one other friend. It's just less bullshit to deal with. You don't have to get them to leave the venue because they already left. And you don't have to deal with the whole group of cock block friends. And you can pretty much go right into logistics, meaning, hey, what's up? I want to meet you. What's your name? Uh, what are you guys up to right now? Or let's say she's by herself. What are you up to right now? Oh, I'm just going to call an Uber. Like my friends just left. Oh, you're just going like, to go to sleep? Yeah. Oh, cool. I live close by. We should go have a drink there. Oh, well, objections. I don't go home with strangers. Uh, you know, I'm not that kind of girl. I have a list of 14 of them. They like 99% of the time, they're going to say one of those 14 things. I've heard them over and over and over and over and over. It's always the same shit. It's usually fucking, um, they can't be their friends or they don't know if you're safe or how will they get home or they have to be up early or blah, blah, blah. Right. And it's the same as in Wolf of Wall Street where he's like, they got to think about it. They got to talk to their wife. They got to fucking talk to the tooth fairy. It doesn't matter. The reason is they don't trust you. So what do you say? Right. And he teaches the guys like, here's how you put her at ease. Right. An objection is just the girl wanting to feel safe with this stranger, but going home with him. <clears throat> and she wants to know if you're high value enough, meaning she doesn't want to go home with a loser or a guy that's maybe faking being high value, <clears throat> which comes out quick. Trust me. Right. Like that's why I can spot with these creators online, watch him for talk for 20 seconds. It's like, okay, he's not fucking hot chicks. I know for sure. And <laughs> just by how they're talking and carrying themselves <clears throat> and girls know way better, right? Girls have like a spider sense for that shit. <clears throat> they have 10 times more white matter in their brain, which is responsible for interneuronal connections, which is responsible for uh, social and verbal tasks. <sighs> how do you have this deep voice? Well, you know, uh, <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, it's deeper than it, than it used to be, I guess, because of testosterone replacement therapy, uh, TRT through an endocrinologist. Um, I guess <laughs> maybe I hit puberty late. <laughs> I actually did hit puberty really late. Wait, me and my dad did this 
<clears throat> uh, this scan at the Human Longevity Institute in La Jolla, California. The, the Craig Venter uh, founded that uh, famous geneticist uh, that helped sequence the first human genomes. And we went and got our genome sequenced. We had like a full day of extensive health testing. It's like 15 grand each. I, I took my two parents and they found in his genetic code that um, like puberty sets in like way late. And he got the award at his high school reunion for like growing the most after college. I, I'm six foot four, 194 centimeters. I didn't grow till like late high school, early college. So like I used to play basketball a shit ton. Like I used to play competitively, but I was always short. So I had to get really good at shooting. So I was like super good shooter. <clears throat> I would practice like countless hours. I got really good at dribbling and shooting. So I was like a shooting guard. Um, and then I grew later and I stopped playing basketball. But um, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, I have done one. I can link that for you guys real quick. And again, for those, there's a lot of misconceptions. I'll just give like a 30 second overview. A lot of people think testosterone replacement therapy is steroids. I don't look at it that way. It's just replacing a natural. I look at it just as like a, the same as any vitamin supplement. So like if you're low on vitamin C, you take vitamin C supplements and then you get retested and then your levels are higher. We naturally produce testosterone as men and we're not meant to live biologically much past 30. So and if you, you know, just look back a couple hundred years ago, most people were dying by age 30. <clears throat> you know, there, were, there was unsanitary conditions. There was uh, lack of access to, to food and water. There was lawlessness, right? The, and vaccines, there were, people were getting wiped out by mumps and measles and rubella and shit like that. Dysentery because there's poor conditions. Long story short, we're meant to like reproduce in our like teenage years and stuff like that and then not live a whole bunch longer past that. So our testosterone for a lot of guys starts rapidly declining. Now testosterone is responsible for muscle mass, your ability to lose fat, your even your confidence levels, um, your stress tolerance, your emotional resilience to handle different situations, your energy levels, the quality of your sleep, um, at, like everything, right? Like there, there's like a bunch I'm, I'm leaving out, but if they are low or off, it's going to impact a whole shitload of things. Oh, your libido obviously as well, right? And you, what you do is you get your testosterone levels tested through an endocrinologist, through a doctor. Don't go on the black market and try to get testosterone. If you are low, <clears throat> you can discuss, uh, you know, solutions with the endocrinologist, one of which may be supplementing with testosterone and i've tried the gel i've tried the um there's other things like the the multi-month shot like the nabito shot the andro gel this stuff what i found and this is just my opinion not medical advice <clears throat> but what i found works the best and is the most tried and true is just to take like one shot a week or split it into two doses and take two shots a week of just injectable testosterone right? you can inject it yourself or do it at a pharmacy under medical supervision and what that does is it puts your levels back to where nature intended them to be so it's better for longevity too it's actually it actually helps you live longer um so when i tested my levels some years back i was at like 300 which is like a 90 year old man and my theory is that i fucked my endocrine system due to years of daily binge drinking along with you know shitty sleep and just lots of late nights out of the club poor diet for a while um Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Not much sleep for a while when I was going out and working a full time job, right? Like getting like one to two hours of sleep a night sometimes. And you know, I'm like far healthier now. I've, I've got everything in check. Like my my blood work is all like optimized. The doctors are always like, I've never seen anyone with like this optimal of a of a like vitamin and mineral profile. And I'm like, yeah, that was all done on purpose. Like I like designed it that way so that I'm optimizing my health. Um, but yeah, long story short is that you get tested not everybody, like my uncle is like 52 or something like that. And he's still in the eight hundreds. So not everybody needs it. It's get tested under expert supervision and have them recommend something. Um, <clears throat> nice. If that's true, it's awesome. Um, 
500 is a rare milestone to hit. It's one D on my finger. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't know many guys over 500, to be honest. Um, okay. So, oh yeah, okay. So how do we get 10 to 20 numbers a night? Let me, let me fucking finish that point that I keep diverging from. The way you do that, let's, like I said, you get there at 1030 and you stay till 230. That's four hours. Let's say you're getting four numbers an hour. So there's 60 minutes in an hour divided by four is 15 minutes. If you're getting a number every 15 minutes through the night, it's four, four numbers each hour. So four times four is 16. There you go. You just landed in the 10 to 20 phone number mark. Okay. But some girls aren't going to be interested. Some girls are, it's not going to go anywhere, et cetera, et cetera. And that will burn some time, but most of your interactions won't last 15 minutes. You should be running like five to 10 minute interactions. So you can comfortably get even more than four numbers per hour. Okay. On a typical night, I'll come in, do a lap of the whole place without opening as a rule. And I'll just see like what's there to offer. I'll typically go in on the hottest girl in the club that I can find. And I work my way down from the hottest girls down from there. Right. And when your game's good, you can oftentimes pull the first or second girl you approach. But for the sake of argument, let's say we're just number collecting. Um, you're just gonna like talk to one girl, get a number, immediately go to the next girl, get a number, immediately go to the next girl. If you get a make out or you talk to an exceptionally very hot girl that where it seemed pretty on switch rooms or switch floors if possible. So that it's not right in her face when you go to the next girl. If, and this is just an if, if you speak to every attractive girl in the venue and there's none left, which will happen sometimes depending on the size of the venue um, and the, the amount of people there, then you switch places. Okay. So you should have a backup place in mind, preferably close by so that you're not burning time. But that's how you get 10 to 20 phone numbers a night. The reason why most guys are not getting anywhere close to that is because they're spending a lot of their time standing around scared. Okay. I'm just being straight up. That's, that's what it is. And I know a lot of you can relate to that. You go out to meet girls and then you're standing there with a fucking beer against the wall scared. Okay. And you're watching other people talk and watching other people have fun. And also a bad strategy, right? Because when guys, if and when they work up the courage to go talk to the girl, they go in and say dumb shit because they were taught that. And then the girl responds negatively. And then after enough of those reactions, they blame their looks or they blame girls, right? Or they say pickup doesn't work. And actually all those are just wrong. Okay. It's not that it's the looks or it's the girls or the pickup is wrong. It's just they were using a bad strategy and oftentimes had a negative mindset as well. Um, Okay. Let me shout out. Uh, hit the like button for those of you guys that fucking came on late. We're working a side channel up. Actually, let me shout out the side channel. We're going to be formally announcing it now. Side channel is getting more traction than the main channel because it's not shadow banned and not demonetized. Being careful not to let that happen. But here is my other channel. And I encourage you guys to go subscribe there now. We're releasing new content every day on that as well. Um, subscribe to my other channel. Here it is. John Anthony Lifestyle Daily. So everybody do me a quick favor. I don't usually fucking ask for stuff like this. But, you know, we're, we're trying to get a lot of the regular viewers to be watching on the, on the next channel as well because some of the videos are really popping on the other channel because it's not limited by a shadow ban <clears throat> it's still a brand new channel early on but there's a lot of content on there already um and it's new you know there's like special editors on that channel working a lot of the stuff up so it's definitely worth it to pay attention over there we're gonna drop some emails to our list let everybody know in some community posts and i'll do some videos formally announcing it as well okay so uh let's see and like i said guys like if you want to get this all solved right like i can teach you there's far more to this not not in a complicated way but there's there's more like of my secret sauce type stuff that i don't go over on youtube in the paid programs so if you want to join the eight-week program 
PlatinumDatingSystem.com, or you can just go book a free 30 minute call and go over the options. And uh, the five day Miami program is coming up as well. You can fill out an application in the description for that. Okay. Hey, I joined your approach breakthrough challenge. <clears throat> All of them, <clears throat> the one you did in January, I met a girl on the tram and now she's on rotation. Plus, plus I to chicks also. Okay, cool. <laughs> um, let's see. I don't have wingmen because my friends are either in relationships or not interested in nightlife. It's better to go out. I mean, this is my personal preference, <clears throat> but I think it's better to always go out with someone because there's plenty of times I went out solo, right? When I was going like really hard, sometimes my friends didn't want to go to the after hours and I would go solo. Sometimes people wouldn't want to go out on a given night and I couldn't find anybody to go out and I went out anyways. But what you want to do is just find anyone in your friend network that can go out. It doesn't matter if they're in a relationship or married. It's just better if they're out there with you because then that places less um, necessity on like needing to make something happen. Right. Because when you're out solo, you're like, okay, I, I need to make something happen. I need to make something happen. I don't want to waste a night. I don't, you know, I'm out here just to meet these girls, blah, 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 blah. Some girls might think it's weird that you're by yourself. I have a video on, on the five step process for going out solo, um, which I can link as well. But just try to find anyone to go out with. And it doesn't matter if the wingmen are bad either. I think that actually can make your game stronger. I had a lot of bad wingmen over the years. <clears throat> And not only do you have to convince the girl that you're safe and cool enough to go with, but that your wing is not a fucking total weirdo as well. Um, here's my video about TRT. Video about testosterone replacement therapy. And then I'm going to link my video on the five-step process for going out solo. For anybody that's doing solo game. Okay, five step process. That's cool. Okay, keep going. Best city for straight to the house hookups. Um, I mean, like for polling and stuff, you know, what's going to have the most options is, is a city like Vegas. But a lot of those girls fly away, so it's hard to build a rotation there. Plus, most of the phone numbers you get are useless because the girls fly away. But it has, like, extremely good day game and night game around the clock. So for pulling, that's a really good one. Um, and then just, like, any place that's not proved is going to be good for inviting girls straight to the house, which is, you know, most cities in the U.S., or Western nations. Choosing signals slowed me down. Yeah, don't wait for the girl to stare at you or look at you or acknowledge you or give you some kind of indicator of interest before you approach. Just go in within three, excuse me, go in with, within three seconds of seeing her. Okay, let me, I was explaining this to my, my clients last night in my eight-week program. <clears throat> A lot of guys are like on dates and they're like, okay, I need to like wait for the opportunity to twist something she says sexual so that I can sexualize the interaction and make it non platonic and not be friend zoned. So they're looking to make an innuendo and they're looking for like the perfect thing to make an innuendo about. Don't think like that. Okay. Yes, you should be twisting anything and everything that she says or does sexual when you can spontaneously, but don't be like waiting around like, oh, can I turn this? Can I turn that? Can I just do it in the moment if it seems like you can twist it? <clears throat> Now, the way I described it last night, which I think is a really good way of describing it, which I'd never really thought of before until last night, is that sexualizing in the interaction, which is super critical, it's one of the most important things. If you talk to the girl like a friend, she will see you like a friend, and that's how you get friend zoned. So a lot of guys, just like they're afraid to approach, a lot of guys are afraid to sexualize because they're like, well, I can't speak to a stranger that way. 
Uh, what if she gets offended? Uh, what if she doesn't like that, etc.? Trust me, they want you to talk to them as more than a friend, okay? Because that's what you do if you're interested in them romantically or, or sexually. So all you have to do <clears throat> is treat them like a pre-existing fuck buddy. But like, say there's like a line, right? Let's say you're out with a female coworker. There's like a certain line which you're not going to cross. You're not going to start talking about her tits and her ass, for instance. Same with like if you happen to have a female friend, you're not going to cross this line and, and be very sexual with her, right? However, a girl that you're already banging, you can talk to her that way. So that's why I always say think of it like she's a pre-existing fuck buddy because that gives you permission to cross this platonic line and talk to her beyond that. So like, here's an example, right? There's a new 18 year old that I banged yesterday that came straight to the house. She showed up with like fucking perky nipples and a shirt with no bra and like her ass, like falling out of the bottom of her shorts, out of the bottom of her jean shorts, right? Like looked stacked. And I was like, oh, so it looks like you don't like wearing bras. And she's like, oh, like, ha ha ha. Would I say that to a coworker? No. Would I say that to a female friend? Probably, <laughs> but like, most people wouldn't. My point is like you wouldn't you wouldn't make inappropriate, classically inappropriate comments to someone that's on a friendly level. Let's just use the professional level example, right? If you're on like a business conference or something, and there's some lady with like hard nipples, you're you're gonna look, but you're not gonna be like, hey, your nipples are hard, you know, unless you're trying to hit on her. So, <laughs> and then same with like the ass falling out of the shorts. I was also like in Portuguese, like you can say bunda, like bunda is ass. And boom, down was like, like nice, like big ass. And I'm like, in Portuguese, I'm like, oh, it looks like you have a boom, down also. And she's like, oh, my God. And so, and I'm saying that shit right away. Why? Because I saw it and it came to mind, right? So I'm just speaking to them as if they're a fuck buddy, as if <clears throat> they're a girl that I've already banged. And when you do that, it removes you from the platonic category. If you don't do that because you're trying to play it safe and, and trying to um, not offend her or, or whatever, or you're just it's outside of your comfort zone, so you're just not going to do it, which I run into all the time with clients. It's normal, and, and, and I went through it myself in the earlier days. If you do that, you're going to hear a lot of times, oh, I didn't feel the chemistry, or I don't see this going anywhere. And oftentimes, that's symptomatic of not sexualizing. I tell my clients the two most important things to do on dates is to sexualize that's number one that's what we're talking about here and number two is to frame it so that she's coming back home with you most guys forget to do both or they're scared to do both because it's easy to just sit there and like talk and chit chat and stuff like that but when they're about to make a sexual remark or make a non-platonic remark that goes outside their comfort zone so they get scared when they're going to invite the girl back home it's opening themselves up to the girl saying no or you know, otherwise being disinterested and then them feeling stupid or them feeling bad about themselves. So a lot of these areas where guys struggle is just because they're afraid to go outside their comfort zone. And I help them work through all that stuff. I have strategies for breaking through that as quick as possible. But that's um, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about sexualization. That's like kind of an expanded definition. It's not just innuendos. My classic example that I always use is that's what she said, where the girl sits down, oh, today was really hard. Do you like it when it's hard? Ha, ha, ha. Today was really long. Do you like it when it's long? Ha, ha, ha. Right? Like <clears throat> the word for hard in Portuguese is duro. And whenever the girl says anything with duro, I'm like, we'll say gosta duro. That means like you like it hard, right? And they're like, oh, my God. Right? So you, you can flirt in other languages like that too. And it's almost always said as a joke. Okay? So I'm not just like, yeah, you like it hard, right? Like it's not like said in a creep like in a creepy way, right? And it's also not like a lot of students will misapply and they'll be like, "Tell me your deepest, darkest sexual fantasies," and and that's not how you sexualize either. It's not like some little um, thing you have like ready to go, like some little remark you have ready to go that is like extremely sexual. That's just like too hardcore, right? There's a subtle difference between like, "Hey, it looks like you don't like to wear bras," right, versus like, "Oh, like." you know oh do you like your uh, erect nipples being sucked or you know stuff like that like there's like a, a line where one is like a bit crass and out of control and the other one is just like you know flirtate flirtatious joking 
<clears throat> you want to be in the flirtatious, flirtatious joking category. Okay. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you bang 200 chicks in a city of a million, does that mean that in a city of 200,000, you should bang 40 chicks? Um, good question. I, I just threw that out as a point of reference. I've noticed that in, in capital cities like San Diego, um, that was like about a million. Warsaw is about a million. I'm banging about 200 girls in about a year and a half. That doesn't mean I've ran through the whole city, right? And, and it doesn't, there's still plenty of other girls. That's just typically like at my rate of how often I'm closing, right? Like if I was in a city of 200K, I would bang in a year and a half, you know, probably close to the same, but I'd start running into a lot of the same girls a lot quicker. So you start seeing the, the same girls on the apps over time. You start um, having it happen more often where you're banging girls' coworkers and her friends and they're all finding out about you. Or like <clears throat> I've had chicks where like their cousin is working at like a coffee place and they're like, hey, my cousin saw you with all these girls at this coffee place. Oh, that's for work. Oh, why is it only with females? Oh, I have a lot of females. You know, and it's this fucking... It, that kind of shit happens more and more. Like Jesse's encountering that now. Jesse from my team in Dallas. Like he just like fucking went with Houston. They're they're in um Mexico right now. But like <clears throat> Jesse's banged a lot of the hot girls in Dallas because he pulls almost every night. And so it's like time to move. <laughs> it just becomes I don't know. You're not gonna run into these problems unless you're like running through a lot of volume, right? Like I've got literally eighteen thousand contacts in my phone. Right, like if we look at my fucking amount of contacts here, it's uh, Jesus fucking Christ, is that hard to focus on the fucking number? Can you see? Can you guys see that? There we go. Eighteen thousand three hundred forty contacts. Okay, so if I was maintaining my ten percent, I should be at one thousand eight hundred thirty days, but I'm at one thousand six fifty. Um, I, I attribute that slippage in the 10% to living with Liz. You know, I, I, I decided to hang out with her a bunch of times, running a big rotation. Um, and, and I just, you know, I don't, I don't close out. I let, I let a bunch of stuff slip to the cracks these days, which I never used to do. I, I brought up on a, a previous live how I had like, um, a chick trying to meet at like one thirty in the morning the other day. And I just was like, I was like hanging out with friends and I just decided to fucking not go. Um, or other, other times I decide to fucking, you know, do shit, do other stuff, right. Instead of go bang a new chick, but, um, it's not, it's not just balls to the wall, close at all costs. And I keep my quality very high as well. So like it could be, the count could be a lot higher. If <laughs> I think if I was just going like, you know, straight hardcore closing mode, but anyways, um, 20, 40 chicks. So yeah, it's not it's not a direct uh, correlation like that, where you you would bang less girls if the city was smaller. It's just that you would start to run out of options. You're going to start to get like that. There's no more people, new people around you on Tinder. Um, you're going to be you know running into some of the same girls at night spots, stuff like that. So, but you know, for most people, it's not a problem because they're not racking big numbers. Ethical question: Is it a legal boundary for you or a moral one to have sex with an eighteen-year-old, not a seventeen-year-old? Um, I'm just not attracted to like younger teenage girls, right? Like, fucking, you know, fifteen. 14, I'm not attracted to that. So it's it's not. I wouldn't say it's a, a more a moral thing, but like, I'm just not into that. So like, I just sleep with girls that are eighteen and up. Um, but yeah. Uh, let's see. I think it's fucking weird when guys are like trying to hit on like young, like younger girls. I don't know. Um, and like guys like Tate have gone on record saying like, it's easier to leave his imprint and like manipulate mentally, like mentally coerce. He didn't say those terms. That's basically what he's saying. Um, younger girls, which is kind of fucked. Right. Um, I just like girls that are hot. So like, I don't, I don't discriminate based on age. Like if a chick's like 35 and she looks like a nine, I'll bang the shit out of her. It's not like, Oh, over the wall, but uh, like hotness is the equalizer for me. So like most of my chicks are between like 
18, 25, but there's a bunch between like 25 and 31, 32 as well. It's the second category. Um, <clears throat> hold on one sec. Okay. Um, anyway, I'm, going I'm on a live here. Do you want to text? Yeah, text? All right. Um, okay. After your approach breakthrough challenge, I called approach to girl. She's on rotation. Super cool trick. Super cool chick. She's also in the girls. Awesome. Okay, what is the social hook point? Don't and hit the like button for those people that are on, please. Don't pay attention to the social hook point. The formal definition is it's the point where the girl realizes that she likes talking to you and that she wants you to stay. Now, the reason why I don't like this term is because it presupposes that. And keep in mind, this is wrong. This is this is what it's. I'm, I'm critiquing why it's wrong. So don't take this to heart. It presupposes that the girl does not like you yet or that the girl hasn't decided about you yet until you've hit this point. So guys are like, and, and what that does is it, it makes you think that you're maybe lower than her at first trying to gain her value, trying to gain her approval or that like there's a chance she doesn't like you or, or might not like you at all. Remember, the mindset is you're at 100 out of 100. And you're assuming you got the girl before you go in. The purpose of the interaction is not to win her over. It's not to gain points. It's not to avoid losing points. It's not to keep more time going in the interaction. None of those things. Okay. It's to move it forward, determine her logistical situation, and answer any points of noncompliance and objection in turn if and only if they come up. That's it. And to sexualize so that you don't end up platonically friend zoned. That's it. You're, you're not there to win her over. Okay, you're not any like that's why most systems are wrong. They come in and it's like, hey there, you're re you looked really hot, and I just had to say hello. And uh, you know, and then then the guy like Todd V followers, okay, time to do push pull. Uh, yeah, you seem cool, but I don't know if it would work out between us because you're not my type. And the girl's like, okay, this guy's a fucking loser, right? You, you don't need to do all these little contrived little tricks and games and bullshit to, you know come back around to get her to like you. No, you're coming in. You're a high value man at all times. You're not going into a pickup alter ego. You're not going into pickup mode. You are the embodiment of a hundred out of a hundred men. Why? Because you have a lot of cool shit going on as you get results with women. That's another why. Why? Because you bang hot chicks. Why? Because you got a lot of phone numbers last week. Why? Because you have dates set this week. Why? Because you have multiple attractive girls in rotation. All of those things are going to feed into this belief that you're the man. And, it, and it, at first, it's just a belief, but you have it backed on, as I said, the cool experiences, accomplishments, hobbies, interests, and skills. Then as success comes in the game, that feeds back into those beliefs about yourself and really makes them solid. Okay. And how do you think like those beliefs are for me now that I've banged 1,654 girls? They're like ultra rock solid, right? Like nothing any girl says or does is going to throw me off how I think about myself or any fucking random guy either, right? Which comes in handy when there's just a bunch of fucking morons trying to talk shit online, right? That's the internet. But you should see how much fucking shit comes at, at, at a creator in the form of like people, people are all like tough guys and, and all this stuff behind a keyboard, right? Like you'll get emails and, and comments and, and Facebook messages and all this shit. Yeah, blah, 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 blah. Uh, usually baseless, you know, nonsense and a lot of guys will get thrown off by that a lot of creators can't handle reading that stuff because it like shakes them and, and <laughs> i don't give a fuck what some dumb idiot online says right but the point of as i said like getting back to the question you don't want to focus on the social hook point because it's like from a theoretical standpoint in the game it's presupposing that the girl might not be interested that she doesn't like you yet which is a bad mindset what is that going to do? It's going to handicap you and make you want to try to gain her approval. It's the same flawed concept that RST was pushing when they were talking about state. 
Now, this is another flawed concept, but just a quick explanation of that. They would say that you come in, let's say that your value, your potential value is at 100, right? That's what you're capable of. But instead, um, hopefully that's not fucking too loud out there. Shut the door, maybe. <laughs> um, instead, you come in and you're like, I'm in a 30 out of 100. Right now, RST was literally instructing guys to go and speak to guys and fat chicks to build state so that they are ready to approach the attractive girls. Now, let me tell you why that's flawed. Okay, if you come in and you're like, our maid has her, her fucking daughter here too. Um, <clears throat> all these people walking around behind me today. If you're thinking you're at a 30 out of 100, how's that going to go if you go and talk to an attractive girl? It's going to go horribly. Why? Because you don't believe in yourself. Why? Because you think you're not good enough. Then you're wasting time. Remember the opportunity cost point. You're wasting valuable time, which is your most valuable resource in the night out. Speaking to guys, which is a waste of time at all times, like in terms of like getting like you're trying to get girls. There's no point to go speak to guys to build state. That's retarded. And you don't need to talk to fat chicks ever. And you shouldn't. You should never speak to girls. <laughs> Uh, you know, you can in, in public and stuff like that, like interacting with people in society. <laughs> in terms of like gaming, right? When you're hitting on girls, you should never hit on girls that are below your attractiveness threshold. Remember, it's a binary decision. I would fuck her. I would not fuck her. If you wouldn't, you don't need to go fucking burn your, spin your wheels speaking to her to, to try to build state. So the RST theory is literally that that you go in like 30 or 40 out of 100 you talk to a bunch of guys and fat chicks, which are like throwaway interactions, because they also say you can't pull in the first half of the night, which is another fucking terribly flawed concept. I pulled it at least as much, if not more, in the first half of the night than the second half of the night. It's a little bit easier of a sell to pull in the first half and convince them to go and come back than to leave and not come back. Um, so uh, the reason why that's flawed, as I said, is you're handicapping yourself. If you went to speak to a girl when you're at 30 out of 100 in your mind, you're basically like asking for a rejection. I've used the, the used car salesman analogy where if there was a car that had the windows busted out and the parts all broken and it was you know, basically a dilapidated car and the salesman was like, hey, do you want to buy this? You're going to be like, fuck no, right? That's how you're presenting yourself to the girl when you're thinking of yourself as less than 100 out of 100. And almost every guy is presenting himself as that shitty car. Why? Because they have hangups in their head mentally. They think they're too short. They think they're too ethnic. They think they don't have enough money. They think they're not good looking enough. They think they don't dress enough. They think their physique isn't good enough. They think they're too shy. Maybe they have a stutter. Maybe they fucking, you know, whatever. Maybe they're a little bit nerdy. Maybe they're lacking experience with girls. Any and all those things are going to contribute to a negative mindset, which in turn is going to handicap them, which in turn is going to make it a self-fulfilling prophecy or in straight terms, it's going to severely lower the chances of a successful outcome. Okay. Additionally, RSD goes further and says that if you get a series of rejections, you can have a state crash and you start negative spiraling. So maybe you built up your, your value and your, your opinion of yourself by talking to these dudes and fat chicks, which I don't even agree with on its own. It's, it's flawed everywhere. But let's say for the sake of argument that that happened and then you ran into a series of rejections and you didn't listen to me that you have a brick wall here and you're 100 out of 100 and these external responses don't impact your value, right? So instead, you start having this state crash and now you need to go build your state back. The whole thing is just fucking retarded, okay? Instead, much more effective and, and correct is to think of yourself at 100 out of 100 that never changes. Okay, so you're not going to pickup mode. You're not listening to these rejections or negative reactions and letting that drop your confidence or drop your opinion of yourself or drop your self-esteem. Okay, and I, and I have tricks for how to do all that stuff that I work with my clients. But don't think that you need to hit a, a hook point in the set. Instead, assume attraction before you approach. Assume compliance before you approach and then move it forward and then deal with any points of non-compliance and objections in turn. Same as Jordan Belfort's straight line persuasion system in sales. Here's the open of the sale. Here's the close. It's a straight line where you're going from one step to the next. 
if you hit an objection, it goes off the straight line. And then he teaches you how to deal with that objection and direct it forward again. Oh, look, we hit another objection. It went off the straight line. You deal with that objection, you move it forward. Now you got the close. That's the exact same way this game works. Okay. In an ideal world, you open, she's receptive. You isolate her from her friends, meaning you, you lead her by the hand over away from her friends. You get into a makeout. You ask that she goes home with you. There's no objections. She goes home. She hooks up. You close. Okay. That's going to be the minority where there's no objections and no non-compliance. And then every other situation in between, it's almost like you can make a mathematical formula of how long the interaction will be based on the amount of non-compliance and objections and how long it takes you to bring it back to the here and bring it forward again. So let's say, you know, you get up to the point where you're ready to take her home. Oh, I don't go home with strangers. It's off the line. Oh, I'm not that kind of girl. It's off the line. Oh, I'm not ready to kiss you yet. It's off the line. Right. Or she maybe snubs your opener like, oh, you know, I'm fine. And you got to deal with that. If at any point you can't redirect it back to that straight line and move it forward, you cut bait and move on. Right. So let's say you walk in. Hey, what's up on me? Oh, no, thanks. I'm not interested. Oh, I just wanted to talk to you real quick. No, I'm good. OK, have a good night. On to the next girl. OK, it's off the line. It's not coming back. And I teach guys how to make that subjective assessment. OK, so get rid of the idea of a social hook point in your mind. You assume attraction, assume compliance, and you move it forward until you run into non-compliance or objections. And then you deal with them in turn. Um, okay. Uh, I like San Diego and New York City. For training, um, Vegas and Miami are pretty good for training grounds. But for living, not the best. Uh, let's see. What if she says no when you ask her if she likes margaritas? You just switch something else. Hey, do you like margaritas? No. Do you like coffee? Yeah. Cool. Let's meet for coffee tomorrow. You just switch to something, some other activity. Um, is it just me or have all these red pill dating coach? All these red pill dating because he's recently re resubmerged. It's nonsensical. I can't, can't understand that. <laughs> Um, no, you should only be indirect with hired guns. Um, the problem with indirect is like, it makes you look like a pussy. Okay. So the classic indirect opener is like, Hey, I need directions to Starbucks. She knows that you approached her cause you're attracted to her. The fact that you were like trying to disguise that intention makes you look like a pussy. <clears throat> but since everyone is hitting on hired guns, directly which is girls hired for their beauty i apologize for the fucking noise here um you that's why i go indirect because i want to separate myself from the other guys in my city we go to the club and ask each other do you see anyone hot no okay <laughs> um yeah i mean the three second rule that's the whole purpose is that you don't sit there and overanalyze negative potential negative outcomes um, I recommend moving on right away. I have strategies for banging girls with boyfriends. I've banged lots of girls with boyfriends. It's typically a low probability situation, and it's also not worth exposing yourself to risk. Okay, You don't know who you're fucking with if he finds out that you're banging his girl. So if she says she has a boyfriend, she's either telling you the truth or she's lying. If she's lying, it means she's not interested. If she's telling the truth, it's going to be a low probability situation. Just move on. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. Sorry, I have a boyfriend. Cool. Have a good night. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. You just move on instantly. It's literally just like that. Um, let's see. I've got a comp company meeting in like seven minutes, so I'll try to plow through the rest of these questions. Um, make sure you subscribe to my other channel. I'll shout that out again. John Anthony Lifestyle Daily. Um, we're getting some shorts that are like over 20,000, which doesn't happen on the main channel. It's not shadow band there. So we're at some point, we're going to start shifting all the main content over there but it has a whole bunch of side content currently um let's see do you think there's less of an issue in brazil with larger age gaps compared with say the us and the uk um maybe but it's not that big of a deal to the uk either like it's mostly in guys heads right like i had a, I had a client that was like 45 
some girl was like, you're old enough to be my dad. And he thought that every girl must think that. Right. So um, let me shut this fucking door. It's so loud. Jesus Christ. That didn't really help very much, but um, so this 45 year old guy, the, the chick told him that she's old enough to be his or that he's old enough to be her dad. So he thought every girl thought that we trained live in Poland in Warsaw. We brought home an 18 to 19 year old and he's like, oh, dude, I'm fucking twice this girl's age. Like, I guess that it was just me. Once in a while, a girl will have an issue with a guy's age when he's a lot older. Most of the time they won't. So don't make it an issue in your head and handicap yourself. He stopped approaching because he thought every girl thought that. That's bullshit. Same with short guys. Say a girl says, oh, you're too short for me. Or you just know common knowledge. Sometimes a girl doesn't want a guy that's shorter than her. Don't think that no girls want you because you're short. Only move on if the girl says, hey, you're too short. Who cares? There's tons of girls that aren't going to give a fuck. Um... Let's see. Would you accept a kickboxing challenge from Andrew Tate? Um, yeah. I mean, he'd, he'd almost surely win. He was a professional kickboxer. Um, even though he didn't compete in anything, like he had a lot of shitty opponents and he was fighting in shitty leagues that nobody really cared about. So this like world champion shit is mostly BS. That being said, he's a lot better than me. I'm not a professional. So almost for sure he would win. But I'm pretty good at kickboxing, but not I'm not on the level of a professional. Um, let's see. Men and women shouldn't be friends. Men and women should be friends. I think that's dumb. Um, <laughs> what's up, smoke pipe? Josh will be here in less than a month. Um, actually, let me show you guys the new studio. This will be a cool little thing to show. We got the new studio done, mostly. Um, let me just fucking download these pictures here. Okay. I'm going to show you guys real quick what the new studio looks like. We made a podcasting studio. And we are going to start doing podcasts. And it came out pretty well, actually. Let's see. Um, let me show you guys real quick. Share my screen. Here we go. Okay, can you guys see that? So, this is kind of a we're gonna we're that um, we're gonna put more soundproofing here on the fucking uh, ceiling on the sides. We're gonna put more stuff on the shelf above the couch. The brown is gonna be replaced with white, so that blanket is just temporary. And then let me show you the other. So this is what the the framing will look like in the shot. I'm going to start making some YouTube videos there and we'll do some ads. And then this is kind of like where the side camera will be pointed at. Um, this is what the side camera looks like here. So we'll have a spot for like two guests and we'll have the main couch here. So we're going to put in like mic stands and shit. Um, and we've got, there's like a TV on the wall in the back and all that stuff. So, and yeah, we had like a professional designer come in, but that'll be up and running shortly. Um, let's see. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. How do you deal with people who don't like you and also they call you weird? Uh, not give a shit i think it's like a marcus aurelius quote or something where he's like people have to condition themselves to not care about opinions of people that they don't 
know or respect or whatever. So like everyone has shitty opinions. This is the internet. You know, everybody's like safe behind their keyboard. So people can be pretty cruel and mean. But, you know, again, like I'm not deriving. I'm not like, okay, uh, I'm going to feel about myself how everybody like tells me I am. It's it's all derived internally. It's not contingent by what everybody thinks. So it's kind of irrelevant to me. Uh, let's see. It's one of those icing on the cake things. Physique and fashion and style things both help, but they're not going to be like a, a large part of the equation. I have plenty of clients that are in good shape and, and or dress well or both, and it's it's not a magic fucking fix to get girls. Um, no, but that's hilarious. I'm going to make a note to go look that up. <laughs> He's going to rage quit in court when he gets a fucking multi-million dollar judgment against him too. Um, yeah, usually when you say, hey, I want to meet real quick, they say what or they're confused. So you just go right into introducing yourself. Hey, I want to meet you real quick. What? I'm John. I just want to meet you. What's your name? That's how you do it. <laughs> Oh my god uh <laughs> let's see <laughs> yeah i mean it is what it is i'm trying to balance it out you know if you've seen on the main channel i'm doing a bunch of like reaction stuff to you know rollo destiny red pill type topics because that's what everybody fucking cares about and people like drama and blah 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 but then i'm teaching a lot on these lives uh yes maca is the go-to thing for libido supplements yeah that too okay that's good um my portuguese is really good but liz's english is is very very good i would say her english, her english is for sure better than my portuguese but she had an engineering scholarship she went to school on an engineer on a, she was a civil engineer and she learned english fluently over there and we speak english at all times to each other so she's gotten to improve her english a lot with me um my portuguese just got like very fluent in the past like six to twelve months um but now, we're both pretty good in the other language, but I, I would say she's better because she's had more years of experience speaking English. Um, yeah, they're both really good. Ashwagandha and Kaba root. Ashwagandha for relaxing. Kaba is used in the Pacific Islands to like make peace. Like when there's arguments and shit in politics, they take Kaba and everybody just chills out. Kaba is like a cross between being like a little buzz on alcohol, a little bit high, and like slightly on ecstasy. Uh, is what i've heard uh let's see i like warsaw poland it's a good mix of eastern european hotties a million people but it got a little bit ruined by too many pickup um too many pickup companies moving there do you have girls approaching you uh almost never just like most guys Okay, the coaches that say that shit are lying out of their ass. Owen Cook okay, on camera was saying he gets approached a couple times a day even when he's not dressed well. That definitively is not happening. And he's also not up all night fucking till 6 or 7 a.m. as he claims. He's also not waking up, being blown up by stunners. They're all begging to get fucked. None of that's happening. Okay, Girls traditionally are not going to approach guys even if they're very interested. Now and then, since I have tattoos across both my arms girls will like when I was at the 21 convention, I was out with one of my clients, Craig, who's been on the channel a few times. And there was this hot blonde with fake tits that I walked by and I had a tank top on and she commented about the Phoenix on this arm. And she's like, Oh, I like your tattoo. And then I just flirted, tried to pull her home with there. She couldn't, she was with her friends, had her meet me later that night at the conference reception. And we had a drink and then she's like, I have a boyfriend. I can't do anything. And it's funny because I was hanging out with this guy that was the former executive producer of Playboy at the 21 convention. He was like a big fan of my channel. 
And he's like, you know who this guy is? And she's like, no. He basically told her about the conference and like how I'm a big dating coach. And she's like, he's going to fuck your brains out tonight. And she's like, no, I can't do anything. I have a boyfriend. And I was like laughing. And he's like, no, he's going to fuck you tonight. And she's like, no, there's no way that would happen. And then, of course, she did. Right. Like we, I'm like, oh, let's go upstairs. Oh, it's not for sex. So, oh, blah, blah, blah. and then ends up banging the shit on me. And then she's like, oh, I can't believe I did that. I feel bad. I have a boyfriend. And then the next day, she's like, hey, can I come over? <laughs> but, uh, and I don't usually bang chicks with boyfriends that much these days, but he was in LA and this was in Orlando. She was on a business trip too. Um, do you like Asian girls? Depends if they're hot or not. Um, we still will have lights. You haven't seen it with the lights on. There's going to still be the, the neon lights. Again, de this depends if they're hot or not. Um, we might make a, a product on rotation stuff, like extensive stuff about building rotations, having threesomes with a bisexual main and girlfriend, that kind of stuff. Uh, how to build a rotation like one month of four to eight girls. And also... Um, we might do one about like all the mass lead working. Like I just recorded like a multi-hour session of a Tinder super boost where I was alternating between swiping, online game messaging, texting, and date setup in real time. Um, so there, there's still some stuff to offer there, but the A-Week program is very comprehensive and I'm not going to keep repackaging stuff in different ways to make new products. I'm not, I'm not about that. There might be um, additional infield packs we have a whole lot of infield footage that we've never put in products never shown on youtube that we just got edited a lot of it so it might that might be another thing as well um how do you go out and not feel like it's a waste of time if nothing happens mystery says that you should go out with the sole purposes of improving your game and making it more automatic so you want to be able to put it into practice and then judge how you did versus a benchmark of what you should be doing um when you get a quick day again, nobody you sexualize over text. No, you don't want to sexualize over text ever until you've hooked up with the girl because it's going to prematurely slut shame them and then they can back out of the date so that they don't have to realize the shame in real life. Um, okay, I'm going to cut it there. We had a team meeting that started like six minutes ago. Go to platinumdatingsystem.com to book a free 30-minute call or just go to the free 30-minute call link in the description to get your online game profile revamped, learn how to do cold approach optimally, Learn how to run dates, close dates, retain, do all your texting and Tinder messaging and everything in between. If you want to be trained by me live in person, we have the Miami program coming up July 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th, 9th. Uh, it's a Wednesday through a Sunday in Miami. It's in like six weeks. There's an application you can fill out in the description. And I think that's it for now. Um, more infield breakdowns coming soon. More good lives coming soon. And I'll get into that new podcast room soon enough as well okay thank you guys so much everybody have an awesome